how do we make figures in LaTeX? Now, the most common way of making figures these days would be to use uh, to be using Python. So perhaps let's just uh, write a basic Python uh, plotting command. So uh, I'm going to use VI here. Uh, so let's let's make a, a basic Python uh, plot import matplotlib pyplot as plt uh, import numpy as np. Okay, so let's say all right x equals what do we want to say? Let's make a plot of x and y where x is all right, zero, one, two, three, four. And then y is x squared. Let's see if this will work. My Python's, uh, so Python plot.py, oops, Python three. What have we done wrong here? We've got spurious b. And then plt.show. All right, so ah, okay, so we haven't got matplotlib installed in this. Um, but basically, the idea is you should not just, all right, let's just do one thing pip install matplotlib. Oh, come on, pip three. All right, doesn't like me, but it's because I'm trying to use a real vanilla installation of, there we go, something's working. Uh, okay, doesn't like me. There we go. So we have a basic Python plot. And let's say we want to put this into our document. Well, first of all, we should have labels. So we say plt.xlabel x, plt.ylabel y. And we're going to make a plot. Now, the key thing is what you don't absolutely do not want to do is to just take any kind of screenshot or some other rubbish like this and try to put that in your document. So what we should do, the, the absolute right way to generate a, a plot is just to use the plt.savefig command. And what is very important is that you save directly in a vector format. I'm going to show you what the difference is. So I'm going to call it graph.pdf. Okay, so we can save directly as a PDF file here. Um, now, the, traditionally in LaTeX, you would want an EPS file. Okay, but here I've just, uh, I'm gonna save it directly as a PDF. So we can simply run Python 3 uh, plot.py. Okay, and what that should do is just generate me a file called graph.pdf. Okay, so let's go back to our um, let's go back to our report now, and we can bring it back up in TechShop. Now, if we want to add a figure, then it's simply uh, begin figure, end figure, and normally you want a figure to be centered. So we'd say begin center, end center. And then the actual command is this package called include graphics. Uh, and we say far, basically the name of the file, graph.pdf. Okay, so use package graphics. It's graphics like that with an X. 
Okay, there we are. And there is our gigantic LaTeX figure inside our document. Now, so what we'd normally want to do is say that the width of the figure, now you notice that I've used the square brackets here. So the square brackets give me an optional argument. So 0 0.5 backslash text width. would make the figure uh, basically half uh, half of the text width size. So if I want the figure to be the full text width. Now the rule I'm putting figures in documents, now you can see here, it looks like it's um, slightly different color to the background, but that's not true. It's just the way it's rendering it in, for me in TechShop with the dark mode here. But the most important thing is that this is in a vector format because when I zoom in, because I've made it directly as a PDF, no matter how much I zoom on this document, the text is always crystal clear. So let's go a thousand times zoom, 2000 times zoom. I doesn't like 2000. Thousand times zoom in. I can zoom right in my text and it still looks just as sharp as if I was zoomed out. And that's, that really makes it look crisp and clear in a scientific document. All right, so what would be wrong? So let's say I did this the other way. Let's say I either took a screenshot or let's say I saved it as a PNG file. Now what's wrong with the PNG file? Well, the PNG file is bitmapped. So Python, Python 3, Okay, so I've made this file called graph.png now. now. I can open graph.png, just have a look at it. Yeah, it looks, looks kind of similar. Let's, so let's compare graph.pdf to graph.png. So on this screen, they look kind of similar. But let's zoom in a little bit. And let's zoom in a little bit on the PNG file. So you can see that the PDF file is is still saying crisp and sharp no matter how much I zoom in, whereas my PNG file has just gone fuzzy. And this is because of the two different ways that the formats store uh, information. So a vector format like PDF stores uh, things like uh, draw a line, draw text, uh, draw a dot. And no matter what size you make it, it will always render that dot or line uh, to perfection. Whereas something like a PNG file is what you call a bitmap format, just simply renders color this pixel black, color this pixel white, color this pixel uh, orange. And so you can see that this is not scalable, whereas the, the picture on the left is very scalable. And what it means is it always looks sharp. If you put a vector format for a scientific graph in your document, it's gonna look sharp and crisp and clear. And more importantly, the information is, is more easily extractable because you can zoom in uh, for example, on a line, and the line will always be sharp and crisp. Whereas if I zoom in on my line here, I'm going to just get pixels eventually. And it's going to be hard to figure out what the data point actually was. Okay, so that's really, really important. May not seem obvious. Um, I'm going to open this back up in TechShop. Uh, sorry, TechShop. Uh, so it might be very tempting to go like this, and with PDF LaTeX, this will work. But what you get is a very fuzzy graph in the end. So again, if I zoom in on this thing, you know, it just kind of looks a bit blurry to begin with, you know, but it becomes unreadable at some level of zoom in. And so if you don't have enough dots per, uh, dots per inch, it just looks kind of crappy. So if you use a PDF file, it's always going to look sharp no matter how much you zoom in. So it doesn't really matter what's PDF. So same thing again would be in a, so for example, I, the traditional LaTeX format is this EPS uh, format. So I can save it as graph.eps. So EPS stands for encapsulated postscript. So it's like a, it's just like postscript, which is a, another vector format. and Python 3, plot.py. So I can make graph.eps. Now the encapsulated part of the postscript is that an EPS file can't really, doesn't have a page size by itself. So unlike PDF, which has like a, you know, it knows that you're working on A4 paper, 
um, an EPS file is automatically cropped to the size of the image itself. And it really needs to be, it's really meant to be embedded in another document, which is exactly what we're doing here. We're just simply embedding the EPS file into another document. Now, in fact, what will happen on your Mac is that this EPS file will get automatically converted to PDF. Um, but, you know, EPS is the traditional LaTeX format. And, you know, if you're in Python, uh, making plots, you can simply save directly as EPS uh, as well. And the only advantage is that you are guaranteed to get no white space around your graph. All right, so that's uh, really all you need to know about LaTeX for scientific report writing. Um, the rest is, is basically stuff you can figure out by searching Stack Overflow. So, for example, if you want to know the LaTeX command for X, Y, and Z, I just want to convince you that your report really is... Uh, you know, white here. So we've actually got a transparent background. So TechShop was rendering that a little bit funny. The other thing that's really important in a scientific report is making sure the text in your figures is the same size as the text in your document. So uh, really, I couldn't make this figure any smaller. What I could do is make the font size bigger in my Python commands over here, but you can't make the text any smaller. Uh, otherwise, it really becomes not very readable in your document.